What is cultural determinism? It is the belief that the culture in which we are raised determines who we are at emotional and behavioral levels. What is cultural relativism? It is the principle that an individual human's beliefs and activities should be understood by others in terms of that individual's own culture. What is a safe harbor provision? A safe harbor provision prevents an employer from losing the FLSA overtime exemption for improper pay deductions if the employer has a clearly communicated policy and makes a good faith effort to comply in the future. In what type of undesirable engagement do employees appear engaged, for example, by working longer hours, but do not actually feel or think, in an engaged way? Transactional engagement. It can be seen as undesirable, because it is associated with negative well-being outcomes. A summary of cultural determinism. It is the belief that human behavior is influenced by cultural factors, rather than biological. Cultural relativism, is the view that all beliefs, customs, and ethics are relative to the individual, within his or her own social context. In other words, right and wrong are culture-specific. What is considered moral in one society, may be considered immoral in another, and since no universal standard of morality exists, no one has the right to judge another society's customs, to be correct, or incorrect. Ethnocentrism, is characterized by the attitude that one's group, beliefs, culture, and customs, are superior. As such, one believes his or her way to be the best way, the one true way. One is not willing to see another custom, as valid, or potentially right. What task must be accomplished before identifying and analyzing risks? Understanding the organization's risk appetite. Identifying and analyzing risks, is most effectively performed after risk managers understand the risk appetite, and tolerance, of the organization. What are the BRICS countries? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. What is the value of diversity? Broader perspectives which lead to increased innovation. What is risk position and risk appetite? Risk position refers to desired gain or loss. Risk appetite refers to amount of uncertainty an organization is willing to pursue for goals. What is a risk matrix? A risk matrix is used during a risk assessment to define the level of risk by considering the category of probability against the severity of the risk. Note the term probability and severity. How does ISO define risk? According to ISO 31000, risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives, and an effect is a positive or negative deviation from what is expected. This is a picture of a risk matrix. On one hand, you have to consider the likelihood or probability of a hazardous event occurring. On the other hand, you have to consider the severity of injury, or illness, or loss, from the event. What is the key strategic decision, HR must help global organizations make? Which of the Perlmutter EPRG model should be implemented for organizational expansion? Considerations on push factors and pull factors to enter into new markets. Balance between global integration and local responsiveness. Determine how challenges of entering international businesses can be solved by company structures. The answer is C. The key strategic decision HR must help global organizations make, is to find a balance between global integration, 
which leads to standardization and consistency, and local responsiveness, which leads to flexibility and adaptability. Edgar Schein divides an organization's culture into three distinct levels. Artifacts, values, and assumptions. Artifacts, these are the visible, overt, obvious, symbols of the culture but are hard to decipher. It includes dress codes, heroes and symbols, posters on the wall, and even volume of speech. Values, these are the espoused values often called core values, and found on company websites. Espoused values are the company's declared set of values, and norms. Values affect how members interact, and represent the organization. Underlying assumptions, these are the unconscious perceptions, thoughts, beliefs and behaviors, so deeply embedded, that they can sometimes go unnoticed, but are the basis of day-to-day -day decisions within an organization. These are underlying assumptions that are the ultimate source of values and actions. Assumptions are the bedrock of organizational culture. Now, for a summary. Artifacts are what we see. For example, dress, organization charts, observable behavior, degree of formality, logos, mission statements. Norms and values are what they say. This is the reason why things are the way they are, and should be. Company philosophy, norms, and justifications. Basic assumptions are what they may not even realize. Unconscious, taken for granted beliefs about the organization, and its work or purpose about people, rewards, and punishments. Which of the following, underlie values, and are often unconscious to people, in organizations, because they don't question them. Artifacts. Creations. Espoused values. Assumptions. The answer is D. Assumptions underlie values, and are often unconscious to people, in organizations, because they don't question them. Line units, business units that directly advances an organization in its core work. These are units that conduct the major business of an organization. Examples include production, sales, marketing, etc. Staff units, business units that support the organization with specialized advisory and support functions. These are units that assist line units by providing specialized services, such as human resources, accounting, public relations etc. Onshoring, the relocation of business processes or production to a lower cost location inside the same country. Nearshoring, a company contracting a part of its business processes or production to an external company located in a country that is relatively close or within its own region. For example, USA to Mexico. Knowledge management. The process of creating, acquiring, sharing, and managing knowledge to augment individual and organizational performance. Diaspora. A mass migration of a group from its homeland to multiple destinations. Demographic dichotomy. The term to describe the phenomena of the workforce in emerging economies becoming disproportionately young, while the workforce in developed economies rapidly ages. Demographic dividend. Where there are too many skilled workers but not enough jobs. 
This was experienced in the West when the highly educated baby boom generation entered the workforce in the 1970s and 1980s. Demographic Deficit Where there are not enough skilled and highly trained workers to fill job needs. This problem is intensified by the skyrocketing costs of higher education. What is a benchmark job? A job that has a standard and consistent set of responsibilities, from one organization to another, and for which data is available, in valid and reliable, salary surveys. How long does someone need to be employed at a company, before they are eligible for FMLA leave? 12 months. Does not have to be consecutive. COBRA states that a company must provide a defined amount of health benefits for its employees, if it employs at least how many employees? 20 employees. What can an employer do, when employees begin to unionize? Employers may explain fact-based problems with unionization to employees. The employer cannot threaten, interrogate, promise, or spy, on employees to prevent unionization. Risk areas that the human resource professionals are responsible for considering include workplace privacy, legal compliance, safety and health, and business continuity. What is the purpose of a human resources audit? to consider overall improvements that can be made within the HR function. The Uniform Guidelines on Employee Selection Process requires that testing be focused on what? Reliability and validity. What is the purpose of establishing required qualities of reliability and validity? To avoid discrimination against protected classes. What are the four categories of organization development intervention, according to Cummings and Worley? Technostructural, human resource management, human process, and strategic. What is a risk equation? Probability, of a disruption event, multiplied by, loss, connected to the event occurrence. Notice that in the picture, the probability also means likelihood, and loss also means impact, in this sense. In the workplace, the Myers-Briggs type indicator is primarily used for what? It is primarily used as a personality test. What does the ADI Instructional Design acronym stand for? Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. What is the key difference between a strategy and a tactic? A strategy is a larger, overall plan that can comprise several tactics, while tactics are smaller, focused, less impactful plans that are part of the overall plan. What is a risk scorecard? Assessments of risk regarding event probability, speed of onset, existing mitigation, and severity. At the analysis stage, the instructional goals are determined. Here, HR determines and responds to competency gaps, caused by lack of knowledge and skills, and states desired outcomes of successful course completion. HR also determines target audience characteristics, for example, existing knowledge and skills, experience level, language proficiency, and motivation. This informs decisions throughout the ADI process. HR also determines required resources, such as, content, technology, facilities and human. And potential delivery methods are determined. In the design stage, HR seeks a solution that aligns objectives and strategies, with instructional goals. Learning objectives are determined, and define specific measurable actions, that will enable learners to fulfill instructional goals. Instructional strategies establish clear links between course content, and learning objectives, and introduce content and learning activities, in a logical sequence, that supports the learner's construction of knowledge and skills. Testing strategies provide feedback on the learner's progress, 
in meeting the defined learning objectives. In the developed stage, learning resources are generated by integrating content and strategies with supporting media and developing guidance for instructors and learners. Validation of resources in development is performed through stakeholder review and subsequent revision. A pilot test and the feedback or observations collected offer insight into final adjustments that should be made before implementing the learning solution. In the implement stage, HR implements the learning solution by preparing the learning space and engaging participants. Preparation for an instructor-led course identifies and schedules qualified individuals to act as facilitators and take part in a train-the-trainer workshop. Participant engagement begins with notification and enrollment, followed by pre-course communication and interaction, with the newly developed learning resources. In the evaluate stage, you determine the quality of learning resources, and how well they accomplished the instructional goals. Formative evaluation is conducted prior to implementation, in order to determine whether the quality of learning resources satisfies the standards established in the design phase. Summative evaluation is conducted after implementation, generally at four levels. Reaction or perception level, which measures the degree of participant satisfaction. Learning level, which measures the acquisition of knowledge and skills. Behavior level, which measures the transfer of newly acquired knowledge and skills to an actual work environment. Results level, which measures the business and tangible results of the training such as, reduced cost, improved quality and efficiency, increased productivity, employer retention, increased sales, and higher morale. This picture shows you what a risk scorecard for stroke, looks like. It can help teach you what a risk scorecard does. Can you see the risk factors, such as blood pressure, and exercise? as well as the high-risk, caution, and low-risk, factors. This gives a simplified example, of what a risk scorecard does. Companies with a DASH strategy, have as their aim, to meet the needs and requirements of the local markets worldwide, by customizing and tailoring their products, and services, extensively. International. Transnational. Globalized. Multi-domestic. The answer is D. Companies with a multi-domestic strategy, have as their aim, to meet the needs and requirements of the local markets worldwide, by customizing and tailoring their products and services extensively. In addition, they have little pressure for global integration. Consequently, multi-domestic firms often have a very decentralized, and loosely coupled structure, where subsidiaries worldwide are operating relatively autonomously and independently, from the headquarters. What is HR's role regarding offshoring and outsourcing in a global company? Due diligence. What is it called when an organization is a hybrid of standardization and localization? Dilemma reconciliation. How do you start to create cultural synergy? Support managers with global mindset with practice and exposure. What is secondary risk? Actions taken to reduce one kind of risk, increases another. What is residual risk? Uncertainty that exists when all risk management has been exhausted. What are totalization agreements? Agreements that prevent double taxation. They eliminate dual social security taxation, the situation that occurs when a worker from one country works in another country and is required to pay social security taxes to both countries, on the same earnings. What is the difference between diversity and inclusion? Diversity is about who is brought into the organization, inclusion is whether they feel welcome and valued, and not just assimilated. Covering occurs when employees manage or downplay their differences. 
Covering can prevent the worker from bringing their authentic selves to work, and hinder an organization from creating a true culture of inclusion. What are the four T's to influence managers regarding diversity and inclusion? Travel, teams, training, transfers. What is the difference between crisis management and business continuity? Crisis management secures employee health and safety, while business continuity keeps critical business processes going. At an exit interview, Ronk, a software engineer at the Covering Corporation, states that even though Covering is a multinational organization, their efforts at diversity are subpar and geared towards assimilation rather than inclusion. She specifically pointed out that on several occasions, she has felt restricted from displaying behaviors associated with her identity group. What personal dimension is Ronk referring to? A. Appearance. B. Association. C. Advocacy. D. Affiliation. The answer is D. Affiliation is a form of covering that occurs when individuals avoid behaviors associated with their identity group, such as culture, ethnicity, etc. Covering occurs when organizations seek to recruit a diverse workforce but promotes assimilation and not inclusion. This means in response to pressures to assimilate, individuals downplay their differences. Covering includes how individuals behave along four dimensions. Appearance Individuals may blend into the mainstream through their self-presentation, including grooming, attire, and mannerisms. Affiliation Individuals may avoid behaviors widely associated with their identity, culture, or group. Advocacy Individuals may avoid engaging in advocacy on behalf of their group. Association Individuals may avoid associating with individuals in their own group. Dash companies offer a standardized product worldwide, are highly centralized, and subsidiaries are often very dependent on the headquarters. International. Transnational. Globalized. Multi-domestic. The answer is C. Global companies are the opposite of multi-domestic companies. They offer a standardized product worldwide, and have the goal to maximize efficiencies in order to reduce costs as much as possible. Global companies are highly centralized, and subsidiaries are often very dependent on the headquarters. Their main role is to implement the parent company's decisions, and to act as pipelines of products and strategies. Reduction in force. Termination of employment of individual employees, and groups of employees, for reasons other than performance, for example, economic necessity or restructuring. Branding. A marketing function that identifies products, and differentiates them from all other products. Electromation versus NLRB. A US labor law case, related to employer domination of labor organizations, where the employer was found to have created an unlawful company union, which is an unfair labor practice. Licensing. A type of international business, where the licensor, i.e. the firm with the technology or brand, provides their products, services, brand, or technology, to a licensee, via an agreement. This agreement will allow the licensor affordable and low-risk entry, to a foreign market, while the licensee can gain access to the competitive advantages, and unique assets, of the licensor. Here is an example of licensing, where a company is licensed to use the design of a popular character, like Mickey Mouse, on their products. blended learning. A planned approach to learning, that includes a combination of instructor-led training, self-directed study, and on-the-job training. 
It is the use of multiple training methods to achieve optimal learning. 6. Sigma Process A quality control, data-driven methodology, intended to improve business processes, by greatly reducing the probability that an error or defect will occur. Dual Career Ladders A career development plan that allows upward mobility for employees without requiring that they be placed into supervisory or managerial positions. Turnkey Operation A for-profit operation that is ready to use as is the moment it is purchased by a new owner or proprietor. The term turnkey is based on the concept of only needing to turn the key to unlock the doors to begin operations, or to put the key in the ignition to drive the vehicle. Greenfield and Brownfield Investments are two types of foreign direct investment. With Greenfield Investing, a company will build its own brand new facilities from the ground up. Brownfield Investment happens when a company purchases or leases an existing facility. From the picture, you can see that Greenfield involves the investors constructing a new facility, requires more time, and does not require cleanup costs. In Brownfield, the company redevelops existing facilities, requires less time, and cleanup costs are incurred. Dash companies often try to create economies of scale upstream, in the value chain, and be more flexible and locally adaptive in downstream activities, such as marketing and sales. International. Globalized. Multi-domestic. Transnational. The answer is D. The transnational company has characteristics of both the global and multi-domestic firm. Its aim is to maximize local responsiveness, but also to gain benefits from global integration. Transnational companies often try to create economies of scale, more upstream, in the value chain, and be more flexible and locally adaptive, in downstream activities, such as marketing and sales. Service Level Agreement Part of a service contract where the service expectations are formally defined. Unfair Labor Practice Unfair labor practice in U.S. labor law refers to certain actions taken by employers or unions that violate the National Labor Relations Act and other legislations. Such acts are investigated by the National Labor Relations Board. Database Management System Variety of software applications that electronically manage stored data. Independent contractors. Self-employed individuals hired on a contract basis for specialized services. A unified human capital management solution strategy is one involving an end-to-end -end suite designed to manage the entire life cycle of an employee within one integrated system. It is a single system of record for all human capital management needs on a solitary platform. The unified strategy often has a common design interface, it is less robust and more generic, has a single common platform and a single point of contact. A best of breed strategy is to acquire and deploy systems offering the best possible capabilities in a specific HCM functional area. For example, payroll, recruiting, performance onboarding, etc., requiring an integration plan to bolt together each of these point solutions. Best of breed vendors typically offer much greater functional capabilities addressing specific business processes versus any unified solution. The best of breed strategy offers a core area of expertise, are more nimble in their software development releases enabling frequent product updates, and added functionality. Best of Breed has multiple different interfaces, it offers the best available, and is specialized in a specific HR area, there are multiple reporting tools, multiple platforms, and multiple vendor relationships. There is no unified support. 
Organizational Development Process of enhancing the effectiveness and efficiency of an organization and the well-being of its members through planned interventions. Picketing A form of protest in which people congregate outside a place of work or location where an event is taking place. Constructive discipline Form of corrective discipline that implements increasingly severe penalties for employees, also called progressive discipline. Enterprise resource planning. Business management software, usually a suite of integrated applications that a company can use to collect, store, manage, and interpret data from many business activities. Cost-benefit analysis. Approach to determining the financial impact of an organization's activities and programs on profitability through a process of comparing the benefit created against the cost of creating that benefit. Dash strategy is often referred to as an exporting strategy. International. Globalized. Multi-domestic. Transnational. The answer is A. An international company has little need for local adaption and global integration. The majority of the value chain activities will be maintained at the headquarters. This strategy is also often referred to as an exporting strategy. Products are produced in the company's home country and sent to customers all over the world. Subsidiaries, if any, are functioning in this case more like local channels, through which the products are being sold to the end consumer. Groupware. Umbrella term for specialized collaborative software applications. Talent management. System of integrated HR processes for attracting, developing, engaging, and retaining employees who have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to meet current and future business needs. Co-sourcing? Co-sourcing is similar to hiring a consultant or contractor on a continuing basis. With co-sourcing, you obtain an external resource that becomes an integral part of your team, working side by side with your on-site personnel. HR Audit. The systematic and comprehensive evaluation of an organization's HR policies, practices, procedures, and strategies to identify needs for improvement and enhancement of the HR function. Work to rule. Where employees follow official working rules and hours exactly in order to reduce output and efficiency, especially as a form of industrial action. Intellectual property. The ownership of innovation by an individual or business enterprise. It includes patented, trademarked, or copyrighted property. Employment at will. Principle of employment in the U.S., that employers have the right to hire, fire, demote, and promote, whomever they choose for any reason, unless there is a law or contract to the contrary. And that employees have the right to quit a job at any time. Workforce planning. Strategic process by which an organization analyzes its current workforce, and determines the steps required to prepare for its future needs. Reverse innovation. Innovations created for or by emerging economy markets and then imported to developing economy markets. From the picture, you can see that reverse innovation are innovations that trickle up from developing countries to developed countries. Can you think of any? Write it in the comments below. Cloud computing. The on-demand availability of computer system resources, especially data storage and computing power, without direct active management by the user. Gamification. 
selective use of game design and game mechanics, to drive employee engagement, in business scenarios. Workforce management. All activities needed to ensure that the knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics of the workforce, meet current and future organizational, and individual needs. Wildcat strike. Work stoppages at union contract operations, that have not been sanctioned by the union. Secondary action or boycott. The attempt by a union to influence an employer, by putting pressure on another employer, for example, a supplier. Force field analysis. A type of analysis, in which factors that can influence an outcome, in either a negative or positive manner, are listed, and then assigned weights, to indicate their relative strengths. In the picture below, you can see that the initiative is to implement a self-service HR system, that enables employees to self-manage their personal information, such as vacation time, payroll deductions, benefit participation etc. The forces for the change include, it eliminates rekeying errors. Faster execution of administrative work. Online documentation eliminates paper. It reduces the need for clerical staff. It increases control and auditing capabilities. The forces against the change are, managers unhappy with clerical work. It requires training of more people. Some activity costs shift to highly paid staff. Cost of eliminating clerical staff. Startup costs. Now, let's take a look at the EPRG model. Ethnocentric model. This occurs when a company follows the strategy of choosing only from the citizens of the home country, to work in host countries. These companies believe that the home country is superior, and make few adaptations to their products, and undertake little research in the international markets. Polycentric model. This occurs when a company adopts the strategy of limiting recruitment, to the nationals of the host country, locality. It is based on the belief that locals of the host country, know their culture better, and should run the business. This means that the head of office places little control on the activities in each subsidiary, and each subsidiary develops its unique business, and marketing strategies, in order to succeed. Regiocentric model. This is when a company sees similarities and differences in a world region, and designs strategies around regions. For example, an American company, which focuses on countries included in the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, i.e. the United States, Canada, and Mexico, has a region-centric orientation. Also, if companies of ASEAN member countries, focus only on Southeast Asia, then they are said to have a region-centric orientation. Geocentric model. When a company adopts the strategy of recruiting the most suitable persons for the positions available, irrespective of their nationalities, it is utilizing a geocentric model. Geocentric companies, are truly global players who view the world as a potential market, and seek to utilize this effectively. It displays the think global, act local ideology. It combines ethnocentrism, and polycentricism, into a worldview that sees similarities and differences in markets and countries, and seeks to create a global strategy, that is also responsive to local needs, and wants. Now, for a summary of the EPRG model. Ethnocentric. The main decisions are made at the headquarters. Home country standards are applied on all markets. The focus is on domestic objectives. The company identifies with the owner's nationality. High-level positions are taken by managers from the headquarter country. Polycentric. The headquarters has a lower role. Local standards are applied on local markets. The focus is on local objectives. There is an identification with the nationality of the host country. High-level positions are taken by local managers. Regiocentric. The main decisions are made in regional headquarters. Think of the European Union. 
Regional standards are operated in the region the company operates. There is a focus on regional objectives. An identification with the region. High-level positions are occupied by regional managers. Geocentric. Collaboration with local headquarters. Universal standards are applied. There is a focus on global objectives. There is a global view. Having work experience in different countries is a must to take a high-level position. A HR dashboard is a business intelligence tool that allows human resource teams to track, analyze, and report on HR KPIs. Can you see the picture shows overtime costs, vacation days available, employee count, offer acceptance rate at 79%, gender diversity ratio, cost per hire, and so on. Hacking, act of deliberately gaining of unauthorized access to data in a system or computer. Restructuring, act of reorganizing the legal, ownership, operational, or other structures of an organization, such as mergers, acquisition, divestitures etc. Multi-criteria decision analysis, MCDA, decision-making tool, in which a team determines critical characteristics of a successful decision. A matrix is used to score each alternative and compare results. Alternative dispute resolution, ADR, umbrella term for the various approaches and techniques, other than litigation, that can be used to resolve a dispute. Examples include arbitration, mediation, conciliation, peer review panel. Now, let's look at five types of ADR. Conciliation. Neutral third party to communicate with the parties in the exchange of information and settlement options. Negotiation. Traditionally occurs directly between the parties and their counsel, and does not involve a neutral third party. Such as collective bargaining. Mediation. A very flexible process that can be effectively used at any time during the course of the dispute. Collaborative law. Both parties are represented by a collaborative attorney and both parties agree not to litigate. Arbitration. Arbitrator renders a decision, called an award, after there has been a presentation of evidence by both parties. The award is usually binding. Joint employment. Situation in which an organization shares responsibility and liability, for their alternative workers, with an alternative staffing supplier, also known as co-employment. Center of Excellence HR Structural Alternative, established as an independent department, that provides expert services within a focused area to internal clients, and provides a leading-edge knowledge and competency in that area. Turnover Act of replacing employees leaving an organization, attrition, or loss of employees. Attrition? A gradual voluntary reduction of employees who are not then replaced. Attrition is typically voluntary or natural such as retirement or resignation, while turnover includes employees who leave of their own volition, and those who are involuntarily terminated or discharged. Theory of constraints. A system, the chain, is a collection of interrelated, independent, processes, that work together to turn inputs into outputs, in the pursuit of some goal. A chain always has one weakest link. If one applies force to the chain at an increasing rate, it eventually breaks at the weakest link. Therefore, the weakest link is the constraint that prevents the system, chain, from doing any better at achieving goals. After strengthening one constraint, the system is stronger. However, the system does not become infinitely stronger. The constraint simply migrates to a different component of the system. Some other link is now the weakest, and all the other links are non-constraints. This picture shows you the steps in the theory of constraints. Observe the constraint. Exploit the constraint. 
subordinate everything else to the constraint. Elevate the constraint. Don't stop now. Find the next constraint. When organizational members don't agree on what the goals of the organization are, or should be, it is known as a. Instability b. Goal incongruence c. Performance ambiguity d. People orientation The answer is B. When organizational members don't agree on what the goals of the organization are, or should be, it is known as goal incongruence. Push factors. Where companies are driven into globalization by competitive factors such as 1. A need for a new market. 2. Increased cost pressures and competition. 3. Shortfalls of natural resources and talent supply. 4. Government policies. 5. Trade agreements. 6. Globalized supply chain. Pull factors. Attractions to globalization that support organizations' aspirations such as 1. Greater strategic control 2. Government policies that promote outward foreign investment 3. Trade agreements Global integration GI, emphasizes consistency of approach, standardization of processes, and a common corporate culture across global operations. Local responsiveness LR, emphasizes adapting to the needs of local markets, and allows subsidiaries to develop unique products, structures and systems. Achieving global integration is made possible through people, assignees, employees who work outside their home countries, processes, standardized processes, performance, targets and rewards defined from a global perspective. Culture, shared visions and values that are consistent with global strategy. Achieving local responsiveness is made possible through Developing local management. These managers support efforts by understanding local customer needs and business practices, familiarity with local governments, business networks, and media, and an understanding of how to attract and retain top talent. Global Local Models 1. Upstream and Downstream Strategy Decisions focused on strategy, and coordination, and standardization of processes, are made at the headquarters level, workforce alignment, organization development. Decisions aimed to adapt strategic goals and plans to local realities, are made at the local level. Alignment with local cultural practices and legal requirements 2. Identity alignment, and process alignment. Diversity in the differences among people, products and services, branding, is embraced. Underlying operations such as IT, finance, or HR, integrate across locations. 3. The GILR matrix. A matrix containing four strategic options. International, multi-domestic, Global, Transnational The Global Integration Local Responsiveness Matrix GILR Matrix, International, Multidomestic, Global, Transnational, Strategy Options International Strategy Low in Global Integration, Low in Local Responsiveness These are companies with strong global brand identity with specialized products or services are mainly importers and exporters, 
and have little or no investment, outside of their home country. Multi-domestic strategy. Low in global integration, high in local responsiveness. Though the headquarters may exert some control, the subsidiaries are managed as separate markets. HR's focus in a multi-domestic strategy, is providing services to a large number of assignees, training on legal and cultural issues, ensuring the local culture is accommodated in the practices and policies of the headquarters. Global strategy. High in global integration, low in local responsiveness. These companies emphasize volume, cost management, efficiency, and economies of scale. HR's focus in companies with a global strategy is to develop standardized policies. Transnational strategy. High in global integration, high in local responsiveness. These companies have their value chain activities located wherever it is most beneficial. They practice globalization, which is having a strong global image, but an equally strong local identity. Each location adds to the total value picture, and knowledge and expertise is freely shared between locations. Now for a summary of the GI LR matrix. Global views the world as a single market. Operations are controlled centrally from the corporate office. Transnational specialized facilities permit local responsiveness. Complex coordination mechanisms provide global integration. International. Uses existing capabilities to expand into foreign markets. Multinational. Several subsidiaries operating as standalone business units in multiple countries. Types of global assignments. Globalist. Local hires. Short term assignees. International assignees. Just in time expatriates. Globalist. These employees spend their entire careers in international assignments, moving from one locale to another. Local hires. These employees are host country nationals, hired locally in subsidiary countries. Short term assignees. These employees are on assignment for less than a year but longer than a few weeks. International assignees. These are traditional expatriates on full relocation assignments, lasting from one to three years. Just-in-time expatriates. These are ad hoc, or contract workers, hired for a single assignment. Stages of the global assignment process. Stage 1, Assessment and Selection. The assignee selection process includes, 1, develop the selection criteria, 2, involve the right people, including family members, managers from both countries, 3, choose the best selection method and tools, 4, complete the assessment slash make a recommendation. Stage 2, Management and Assignee Decision. Stage 3, Pre-Departure Preparation. Includes visa and work permits, security briefings, cross-cultural counseling. Stage 4, on assignment. This includes, the honeymoon. Culture shock which is when the challenges of living and working abroad become clear. Adjustment which is when the assignee begins to learn the norms, and patterns, of the host country. And mastery is when assignees are able to participate fully and comfortably, also known as biculturalism. Stage 5, completing assignment. The aspects of completing an assignment include, repatriation which is reintegrating the employee back into the home country after an international assignment. Redeployment which is a new assignment. And now for our references. Good job watching to the end.